The Life and Legacy of the Commander of the Faithfuls, Imam Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. The first man in Islam, the cousin of the Prophet, his son-in-law, the first defender and supporter of the Prophet. We will discuss his sacrifice and his contributions over 30 episodes. So please join me. I'm your brother, Mustafa Al-Qazwini. Salaamu Alaikum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله in the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate our praise and our gratitude to our merciful Lord and we implore him to send his peace and blessings upon all of his messengers and upon and upon our beloved Messenger of God, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and upon his pure family and his righteous companions. And I ask the Lord to send his peace and blessings on you, upon you, surrounding you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After the battle of Safin that took place between the army of Imam Ali and the army of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan and the arbitration that took place, the failed arbitration which was designed to take away the right from Imam Ali by some weak-spirited people in particular Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and of course Amr ibn al-As who represented Muawiyah a group of Imam Ali's army, they broke up. And they said, we are upset with this arbitration process. They were about 12,000. And they said, La hukma illa lillah. The rule has to be for God. Though in the beginning they accepted the arbitration, and some of them chose Abu Musa al-Ash'ari to be the representative, the chief negotiator. But when the process was dismantled and it broke up, they regretted and they blamed, rather than blaming themselves, they blamed Imam Ali for it. Historians believe that the Kharijites, those people who are called Kharijites, Khawarij, they were, they were the result of these two wars, the Battle of Camel and the Battle of Safin, because there is there was a lot of discontent and resentment that took place, and also this group of Kharijites they were known for their narrow-mindedness and their ignorance and their fossilization of their mind, tahajjur. And the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa he spoke about this. He said, you will see a group of my ummah yakhruju fi hadhihi al-ummah. In this community, a group will come out the way you pray is nothing compared the way they pray, meaning that they take care of their prayers. But artificial prayers, physical prayers, not spiritual, physical. They claim that they are ultra religious, too religious, too pious. يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَا, يجا... ولا يُجَاوِزُ حُلُوقَهُمْ They recite the Qur'an, but the Qur'an also only comes from the throat, not the mind, not the soul. And this is exactly what we see nowadays. 
with many people who subscribe to radical organizations, terrorist organizations, they memorize the Quran, but they, they don't use it. They don't reflect on it. They, they do not pound, ponder on the Quran. يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ مُرُوقَ السَّحْمِ مِنَ الرَّمْيَةِ They exit from faith. They leave faith. They are not part of faith. It's artificial. In fact, the Prophet وسلم, says, قَصَمَ ظَهْرِي إِثْنَان عَالِمٌ متحتك. Two groups of people, they broke my back. One is someone who is a scholar, but he's immoral. He's not pious. Wajahilun, on the other hand, someone who's ignorant, but mutanassik. Wajahilun mutanassik. Abstinent. He becomes too religious. But he's ignorant. He, know, he knows nothing about religion. He becomes radical. And radicalism is a disease. And radicalism it means when someone does not understand religion. He starts twisting it, altering it. And this is what we see nowadays among many Muslims, especially the youth. We see them in the Middle East, in North Africa, in the Arabian Peninsula, in the Gulf states, in Iraq, in other places, in Syria. We see them, some of them in Europe too. Jahilun mutanassik, ignorant, narrow-minded, but religious. He thinks he's religious, but he's not. So those Kharijites, they were people who felt disappointment. And again, they took advantage of the freedom that Imam Ali gave. Imam Ali gave intellectual freedom, philosophical freedom, religious freedom for groups to come to debate, to speak. So some, they misused this freedom. My friends, freedom and democracy does not work for all people. Some people appreciate it. They play by the rules. Others, they exploit it. They destroy it. They misuse it. And the Kharijites were an example of this. So they kept saying, La hukma illa lillah. Imam Ali said, Okay, of course. Of course, La hukma illa lillah. We also submit to God. And our ruling, it's part of God's ruling. I'm not ruling on behalf of myself. I'm following the Quran. I am following the tradition of the Prophet. But he said, Kalima to haqqin yuradu biha batil. The sentence is a truth. But what is aimed from this sentence is falsehood. The sentence is a facade to something behind this facade, which is falsehood. But Imam Ali said, okay, no problem. If they reject me, it's okay. لَكُمْ عِنْدَنَا ثَلَاثُ خِصَالٍ ثَلَاثُ خِصَالٍ He said to the Kharijites, you have upon me three, three rights. One of them, لَا نَمْنَعُكُمْ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَن تُصَلُّ فِيهَا We would not forbid you to go into the mosques. The mosques belong to God. You go there and pray. You are free to enter the mosque. And entering the mosque is also a metaphor for entering the society, being in the society, part of the society. Number two, As long as you put your hands in our hands, you don't use violence, you don't cut the hands that we stretch to you to help you, you don't cut it, you respect it, you honor it, we give you the faith, we give you from the treasury, we give you the money. We give you the salary. Number three, We are not going to start the fight against you unless we defend ourselves. When, when you start fighting us, then here we have to defend ourselves. 
And then Imam Ali said to them, you are upset about the arbitration. Who called for the arbitration? It, it wasn't me. I was continuing the war, the battle against Muawiyah. We were almost victorious. You put a pressure on me and my commander, Malikul Ashtar, to stop it. And yet when we stopped it, because I listened to you and to your pressure and to the pressure of my army, I did not want Abu Musa al-Ash'ari to go and negotiate. This is a failing person. I wanted someone else who's intelligent, who's pious, who knows what to do. I wanted to choose Abdullah ibn Abbas. But you also put pressure on me to send Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, which was not my favorite. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Abram al-As, those two people collaborated to destroy the whole process and to benefit my adversary Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. قَدْ نَبَذَا حُكْمَ Quran. Those two people, they dismissed the ruling of the Qur'an. وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمَا They threw it in their backs. وَأَحْيَا مَا أَمَاتَ الْقُرْآنِ وَاتَّبَعَ كُلُّ وَاحِدٌ مِّنْهُمَا هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ They followed their own desires, which is alien to God's guidance. فَحَكَمَا بِغَيْرِ حُجَّةٍ بَيِّنَةٍ وَلَا سُنَّةٍ مَاضِيَةٍ They gave their opinion without any clear guidelines or clear tradition. And therefore, Imam Ali, he tried to negotiate with the Kharijites. But some people are stubborn. And some people, they know that they, 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 they have knowledge more than the Prophet, more than the Imam, and some people more than God. They want to teach God what is right and what is wrong. They don't want God to teach them. They don't want to submit to truth and justice. They are rebellion. This is a disease. Radicalism is a mental disease, my friends. And they killed those people that Imam Ali sent to them. Imam Ali sent Abdullah ibn Khabbab and he sent Al-Harith ibn Murrah to negotiate with them. They murdered them. And they were proud. And they said, we are willing to murder even more. It reminds me of what the terrorists are doing nowadays. They respect no rules, no regulations, only the rules of anarchy and lawlessness, the rules of the jungle. Imam Ali sent Qais ibn Sa'ad ibn Ibadah, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, to advise them. Imam Ali said to them, Ayyatuha al-Isabatu allati akhrajaha adawatu al-mira'i wal lajaja O you, the band, that you are insisting on your hypocrisy and obstinacy. Your desire shifted you away from the truth. But they said to him, you need to repent, Ali. You are kafir. This is exactly what they said to him. They said to him, you disbelieved in God, you have to repent. Imam Ali said, I disbelieved in God. Aba'da imani bi Rasulillah. After being the first one to believe and embrace the Prophet, wa hijrati ma'ahu wa jihadi fi sabilillah, ashhadu ala nafsi bil kufr. After being the first one to support the Prophet and to perform the hijrah with him and to defend him in every position, in every battle, now. You want me to admit that I rejected God? I disbelieved? So there was no more room for negotiation. Some of them, some of them when they heard what Imam Ali said in Sarafu, they left. Now whether they left out of conviction that they are wrong or because they did not want to fight, we don't know. Few of them left, 
and that was on the year 38th in an area called an nahrawan near Baghdad. Imam Ali dispatched his troops and he said to them, Kuffu anhum hatta yabda'ukum biqital. Do not touch them, do not instigate, do not begin the war unless they, they begin themselves. So those few who were left, they were crying, you know, لا حكم إلا, إلا لله No rules, but the rule of God. الرواح, الرواح إلى الجنة We want to go to paradise. They remind me of those, some of the suicide bombers who are 17, 18, 19 years old, who are brainwashed by their mashayikh, and they strap the explosives around their waist, and then they run towards paradise. They go and kill innocent men and women and children, and they bomb hospitals and schools and marketplace and mosques and gatherings and funerals and weddings while they, call, while they shout, we are going to paradise. That is the twisted mentality. That is the fossilization and narrow-mindedness and darkness which is very dangerous islam always says respect your reason respect your brain respect your intellect many verses in the quran praises those who possess intellect it says the successful ones are only those who use their reason you have to use your reason and knowing your rights and your responsibilities and your duties. Use your reason. Wake up. Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allamahu al-bayan. We have given you reason and intelligence. Use your reason and logic. But those Kharijites were the example of darkness and backwardness. And of course, some of them escaped that battle of Nahrawan and they decided to murder Imam Ali alayhi salam. Meanwhile, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan who gave generous promises to Amr ibn al-As that if you help me in convincing the people of Syria to fight against Imam Ali alayhi salam, then Misr or Egypt is going to be yours. So now they moved towards Egypt. Imam Ali, when he became the caliph, first he sent Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr to be the governor of Egypt. Muhammad, unfortunately, was killed by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. He was murdered. And then Imam Ali sent Malik al-Ashtar, the commander of his army, to be the governor of Egypt. And he wrote for him his directive, Ahdul Imam ila Malik al-Ashtar, the Ahd, the directive, how to deal with people. It's a beautiful Ahd, beautiful directive, political directive which is important for every governor, every president, every prime minister to reflect on it. Imam Ali details the responsibilities of the political leader, of the governor, of the president, how to deal with people, how to respect their rights. And within that, he says these golden rules, which I love. I, this is my favorite sentence. He said to him, O oh Malik, فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ صنفان إِمَّا أَخٌ لَكَ فِي الدِّينِ أَوْ نَظِيرٌ لَكَ فِي الْخَلْقِ Mankind is of two types, two groups. Either they are your brethren in faith or they are your equal or your counterpart in a creation. So you must respect them too. This means that you don't just respect the Muslims and you neglect the non-Muslims. You respect both. 
The Muslims are your brethren. The non-Muslims are your equal in creation. This is in his directive. And he kept telling him, with your ra'iyah, with your subjects, you have to be merciful. وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ سَبُعًا ضَارِيًا Do not be like a beast. تَخْتَنِمُ أُكُلَهُمْ You are there just to acquire and exploit and dominate. It's a beautiful directive. And Malik al-Ashtar, he reached Egypt. But Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan managed to pass him the poison through some people. And he died. Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi. Malik al-Ashtar, and he's buried now in Egypt. His grave is there. And Abr ibn al-As becomes the governor of Egypt. And Egypt now is occupied by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. Muawiyah continued his policy of assault and attack and intimidating the different provinces and, and, and cities with this objective in his mind to weaken Imam Ali's government. And he succeeded to a big extent in weakening the state of Imam Ali. And the army of Imam Ali was scattered. Many of them were weakened because of three wars, devastating wars. They were too tired. Others, they were purchased by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. Muawiyah was very generous in bribing people. He would spend the wealth of the nation on a bribery, embezzlement, purchasing people's conscience with, the, with his money. And he succeeded in doing so. So almost the army of Imam Ali was dismantled. And Imam Ali was very sad. And you can hear that. You can see that in his speeches that he gave when he came back to Medina, when he, uh, to Kufa, when he missed his friends and his companions. مَا ضَرَّ إِخْوَانُنَا الَّذِينَ سُفِكَتْ دِمَاؤُهُمْ بِصَفِّينَ أَنْ لَا يَكُونُ الْيَوْمَ أَحْيَاءً يَسِيغُونَ الْغُصَصْ وَيَشْرَبُونَ الرَّنَقْ قَدْ وَاللَّهِ لَقُوا اللَّهَ فَوَفَّاهُمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَأَحَلَّهُمْ دَارَ الْأَمْنِ بَعْدَ خَوْفِهِمْ أين إخواني الذين ركبوا الطريق ومضوا على الحق أين عمار وأين ابن التيهان وأين ذو الشهادتين meaning خزيمة بن ثابت وأين نظراؤهم ممن تعاقدوا على المنية وأبرد برؤوسهم إلى الفجر إمام علي was grieving for those loyal, wonderful friends that he had. Many of them were killed in the Battle of Safin. Before that, after that, they were assassinated by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And Imam Ali, he was seeing that his end is coming soon. He was betrayed a lot by his people, by his army, by some people who were with him before he was betrayed. Because few people stand with the truth, and this is exactly in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says the vast majority of mankind, they despise truth. وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.